folks, I'm Ian Baker, and today we're going to go over the 2020 Radiance 28QD. This is a quad bunk floor plan. You have a super slide here helping, up to, helping to open up this main living space. Pretty classic layout, but it has some nice Radiance touches on it. You can see the, some of the higher end amenities they put in here, starting with the countertop here in the kitchen. This is a true solid surface countertop which on an ultralight unit is something you just don't see very often. So I am glad they did it. I personally love a true solid surface. It's gorgeous, it's functional, it's durable. You'll see that you have a flush mount cover here as well that is cutting board quality. So flip it over, use it as a cutting board to your heart's content. Large single basin stainless steel undermount sink in there too. And then the high rise oiled rubbed bronze faucet. Uh, I personally would have liked to see a pull-out faucet. I'm just a fan from the functionality of that. Let me know what you guys think. Is, is this really all you need, or do you like having a pull-out as well? Is it worth the extra price jump? Over to this side is a recessed three-burner cooktop with a glass cover. You can just fold this up and back like so, kind of creates a backsplash. That front burner, of course, is high output. The new Furion cooktops have a couple different options for lights. The top one there just turns on the knobs. The bottom one flips on the knobs and the lights in the oven. You'll also see underneath the sink some additional storage there. I wish they would have only had, uh, you know, like a drawer or a shelf on one side or no shelf at all. That way you could have fit a trash can in there. And again, just my personal preference. Then over to this side, I do like this. A bank of three drawers, and you will notice that the uh, top drawer here already has a divider for the flatware. Uh, I do like that they put that in there rather than having to buy like a small little plastic one. Right up top, open that up, pretty standard storage. Again, oil rub bronze pulls helping to match the faucet. You'll see the microwave there with your slimline hood underneath that does have both a light and a fan. Ever chill 12 volt condenser driven refrigerator. You can see there's excuse me, plenty of storage here. You also have a drawer, um, you know, a little crisper drawer there with the humidity control for your fruits and veggies. Random fact, I did learn, you can't put all fruits and vegetables together. Some of them give off a gas that make, uh, make them ripen faster. So like avocados, tomatoes, uh, bananas. So just bear that in mind. Definitely look that up before you start stuffing everything in there. Anyway, uh, back to the RV. So you'll see there's also a lock. So that way, nice, easy travel lock. That way, you know, stuff's not flying out. Just fold that over when, uh, or push that over when you are ready to open it. Thermostat here. This does control your roof mounted AC as well as the heat in your floor. Uh, very simple and easy to use. Again, just the one thermostat will operate both of those. When we step into the bathroom, open this up real quick. You'll see the medicine cabinet up top. You have mirrors on both sides. Uh, pretty large medicine cabinet, good size there. Turn, whoops, let me find the uh, light switch. There we go, turn that on for you. Right down underneath, so this uh, is the toilet. Plastic bowl here, again, this is an ultralight, so you know, probably for a space savings. Uh, I would have preferred to see a porcelain bowl, and if I bought this one, I'd probably put in a porcelain myself, but I completely understand why they did go with plastic again, because this is a weight sensitive unit. Underneath, it yeah, probably was enough space for a really slimline trash can, otherwise, you have a place for extra rolls of toilet paper if you can find any. Uh, you do have some storage over here to the side, and then an electrical outlet there too. Moving over to the tub shower i'll take a step in here and you'll see that uh you know i do have plenty of space i'm six foot tall and with the skylight you know i can probably be six three and still shower in here without having to duck down you have a curtain there um as far as space you know if i turn sideways it, it definitely is tight right like i'll shut this just to kind of show you um you know if i shut this the curtains I, i'm basically touching the curtain so you don't have a ton of room to maneuver in here but uh you know again you have the height you can kind of make do. You can make it work. Plus with the tub, uh, you know, this is a bunk model, so I do like having a tub just because if you have little ones, you can still give them a bath. You don't have to give them a shower. And then back into the bunk room. So as I said, this is a quad bunk, 275 pound weight capacity here. This one does flip up, locks into place. You have the dinette right underneath. That of course drops down into a bed as well. Uh, I do like having the dinette just because it gives another place for the kids to sit and hang out. You know, whether they want to play a game or color or, uh, you know, just eat a meal back here, whatever it may be. It just offers more versatility to the bunk area. Right in the back, so you'll see you have hookups for your TVs there. Little spot to put your cable through. I don't know if you can, there it is, whoop, whoop. Um, so you can put your cables right through there. And uh, again, you know, just set a TV on top there. 
little bit of storage underneath, man, probably for like movies, games, things like that. And then you'll also see you have two very sizable drawers. So that's pretty good storage for the kids' clothes. On the other side, again, you have the bunk right over here, another one underneath. And then if I can open this up, it's a little tight in here just because, you know, you don't have a slide. Um, so basically, you know, this, this is mainly just a sleeping area. And to kind of further that point, that the one thing that I did notice is if it's nighttime, there's just not a lot of light. You have one light for this entire bunk area. I would have liked to have seen some lights like underneath the bunk, you know, or maybe a couple more up top on the ceiling because one light's definitely not going to keep it bright enough. Um, a big reason for that is the fact that you do have dual ducted AC. You'll see that running through. So they put the light right in the center, so you only have one run of light. Uh, so personally, for me, I would have liked to have seen more light overall, but I'm kind of particular when it comes to lighting in RVs. Right outside the rear bunk room, you will see that you have versatile storage space. This can be pantry, this can be most likely for kids clothes, but really whatever you need to use it for. If you want, you know, one for pantry, one for kids clothes, one for linen closet, the world is your oyster. Uh, and then here we'll see the super slide. It is a pretty big dinette. You can see how long the table is. You know, I'll scooch in here and you can see there, I mean, I have plenty of room for another person here. That's pretty rare. A lot of times the dinettes aren't near this big. Uh, so I definitely appreciate the size of the dinette. This does drop down into a sleeping space as well. But if you plan on sleeping any adult, chances are it'll happen right over here on the trifold sofa. Uh, so this is you know, your main seating area in the RV. You can see a trifold. You can see the cushion there. Just drop that, you know, pull this out, drop that down. And uh, you know, that way you can have two adults comfortably sleep there. A couple USB ports if you need to plug in any kind of electronics. You have windows in lieu of storage. So big full length windows do help to bring in some natural light during the day. Also, it's probably worth mentioning there is access to the storage underneath the dinette. You have the swing open doors there to get to both of those. Uh, the entertainment center right up front. So TV in the center, multimedia center underneath that does have a DVD player. Storage both top and bottom, kind of a little decorative glass there, change things up a little bit. Um, you know, I kind of wish they would have incorporated that somewhere else, like rather than have wood panels here, put the glass there too, just to kind of help pull everything together, especially because you don't have the storage in the slides where it, normally you would find glass like that. But again, that's a, a pretty small uh, nitpicky thing, I guess. Now making our way into the bedroom. So come on in, I'll show you as I can scoop my butt back here. So a couple of pros and cons to the bedroom space. Uh, one of the cons is that as you saw, it is hard to get from one side to the other, but they mainly solve that by having two doors. That way you can just kind of walk into your side of the bed and get in bed. One of the big pros of this bedroom, this is a residential size 72 by 80 inch king bed. Folks, this is a huge bed to have in a travel trailer. Uh, if you're used to having a king bed at home, you'll be happy with the size of this one. Also, because it's residential size, if you want to put a normal mattress in here, you can. Just bear in mind the thickness. A lot of residential mattresses these days, you know, you're starting to get to like, you know, 13, 14 inch thickness. When you put that on there, you know, your mattress is going to be up to here. You're going to feel like you're in a coffin. So just uh, keep that in mind as well. On both sides, again, you have that decorative glass here. They did put it in. You have a uh, hanging space there. You can kind of see that storage across the top there's led lighting in there so you know the bathroom or the bedroom here lights up nice and well and if you do want to watch tv in the bedroom no problem that's where you'll mount it and of course the uh, plug-in for that is right up on the ceiling now that we've seen the insides take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 radiance 28 qd right up front here is a power tongue jack Nice and easy to use. You have a simple rocker switch to raise and lower the tongue. You'll also see you have a light, uh, so you can just flip that on if you're hooking up or disconnecting at night. Uh, as with all power tongue jacks, this one does have a manual override, so that way in the rare event the motor fails, you're not stuck out at the campsite. Behind that, you have two 20-pound propane tanks with a cover. Rails here for your battery. Uh, it is worth mentioning, I forgot to mention inside, this one doesn't have an external battery disconnect, but it does have an internal one. It's right at the control panel, so that way you can kill all power to the RV, which is very handy. Uh, you will see right down here, you have one of two uh, places to tie up your pets, so that way you don't have to bring a stake or anything. Wherever you are, even if you're on a concrete pad, you still have a place to tie up your pets. You will see right up front, uh, is there a better way to say that? A nicer way to say tie up pets? I don't know. Place to put them. Safe. Yes. 
Uh, coming up the front, you have diamond plating, so that way you're not throwing up any rocks or debris uh, from your tow vehicle, not beating up your front end. You see your three-quarter front cap on there too. This does have LED lights inlaid into it, so you know it just gives it that, that extra aesthetic piece. If you haven't seen uh, my video on front caps, definitely check it out. As I said, this is what they call a three-quarter cap. Coming around to the side, you'll see this one has a covered hinge on there. That way you don't have a bunch of rust coming down your door. It's also slam latch and magnetic. Slam latch like so. Open that up, have the uh, magnet stick. This is great, especially when you have kids because that way if they come out and you know they, they, they grab something in here, they go to shut it. If you have the plastic clips, a lot of times they'll just snap right off with the kiddos. Don't have to worry about it with the magnet. You take a look inside, you will see this is a great size pass-through. Plenty of room right in here. Another thing I forgot to mention, we were inside, is this. So you do have a little uh, laundry hamper here. So that way you can just put a, a clothes basket right in the bottom. Uh, you know, and throw the clothes in. My, my only hiccup with these, my hang-up, is the fact they put them on the door side. I really wish more manufacturers would put it on the off-camp side where I'm not accessing nearly as often. Because if I have a clothes basket right here, I'm going to have to take it out to get to anything in there. So, just a small pet peeve of mine. I like the idea, just poor execution. Right underneath, you will see your uh, power stabilizer jacks. One control for the front, another control for the back. That one, of course, controls both the front jacks. Large power awning, again, very simple to use, just a button to roll it out, same thing to go back in. It has an LED light strip built in there as well. You have the uh, foldable handle here, which I like, especially with the more ride step above stairs, because if you have a normal, you know, just a, a smaller grab handle, it's kind of hard to reach, whereas here you have better control from that very first step all the way in. And these steps are very solid, folks. You know, I can walk up and down on these things, bounce on them. They don't have that springboard effect like your standard pull-out steps have. Aluminum treads on there as well, aluminum steps with the grip tapes. So that way you do have better traction when entering or exiting the RV. The only downside to these steps, I do have people that ask me once in a while, is that if it's wet, you got to kind of wipe them off as you fold it up. Otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of mud and dirt, you know, kind of right there in the entryway. So just keep that in mind for what it's worth, I guess. Underneath, this one does have a fully enclosed and heated and insulated underbelly. So that way, as long as your furnace is running, there are duct work that is running underneath, blowing right on those tanks to make sure your tanks don't freeze up on you, which is great. If you want an outside TV, here are the hookups for it. Uh, now, I don't see any place to mount a TV, so I don't know that there is a place, uh, but you do have the hookups. So you can set a little table out here, set it up right on there, you're good to go. Aluminum alloy wheels, so that way they don't rust out on you. It's also easy lube hubs, that way you don't have to pack the bearings nearly as often. And making our way to the back. So this is kind of a novel idea, and I, I wish they would have put this on more than just over the outside kitchen, right? And this is basically like a little, a little drip rail, a little gutter. You know, you have it up top on the roof of the RV, but a lot of times your water still runs down the sidewall. And, you know, while most of your compartments here are pretty good at keeping water out, they're not always 100% waterproof so I like the idea that it just you know has this above it but in my mind I guess playing devil's advocate why didn't they put it above the pass-throughs as well great idea just you know I wish they would have implemented it everywhere I guess let me know your thoughts uh, a little bit of storage right up top here pull this guy out you will see you know sink basin pretty good size sink actually for being an outside kitchen little built-in faucet I like that they you know rather than having one that you have to kind of half assemble they just cut this down and gave you an actual faucet I think that's kind of cool two burner cooktop there as well as you would expect the propane quick connect is right underneath and of course you can plug in your favorite grill or whatever else you need to oh, that opens the wrong way in my opinion but <laughs> there you go uh, open that up so that of course is your outside fridge there uh, perfect for your condiments beverages whatever else you need to put in there uh, as I mentioned, you do have another tie down right in the back here. Making our way to the back, square tubular bumper with end caps, so you have that convenient spot to store your sewer hose. Also mounted to the bumper is the spare tire. Hopefully you don't have to use it, but if you do, it is very easy to access. Right up top, as with most travel trailers these, day, these days, this one does have backup camera prep. So that way, if you want a backup camera, having that prep makes it easier to install, meaning it'll save you money on labor. Most of your hookups are right back here. You will see cable and satellite inlets there. 30 amp detachable power cord plugs in here. City water inlet, black tank flush. That way you don't have to stick a hose down your toilet to wash out your black tank. 
spray port there so you have some water access and then the fresh tank fill is located directly above that and the last couple things i do want to touch on is right up here in the front the first one is solar prep so if you want solar simply buy the portable panels plug it in right there it's already pre-wired it'll trickle charge your battery and the second folks is that this one does use as dell composite behind the fiberglass that's a pretty big deal for a couple reasons. One, it's part of how they get the ultralight, how they help lighten it up because Asdell is lighter than Luon. Also, it'll help because it doesn't absorb water, doesn't absorb moisture. If you've seen the fiberglass where it has the bubbles and it's delaminating, that's from water getting behind the fiberglass and that Luon absorbing it and then that, that uh, fiberglass pops off. This helps eliminate that. Plus, Asdell is a green material and doesn't have the off-gassing that Luon oftentimes has. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2020 Radiance 28QD. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you'd like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also, let me know what you think about this one. Leave a comment if, uh, you know, let me know what you think they nailed, what they missed, or what you would change if you were designing the RV. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.